are you wonderfully curated welcome back to curated i am i know i've been gone for you know a couple couple days but what a way to come back it is wedding season and so to acknowledge all of those who are last minute outfit deciders we're going to do a speed challenge where you can have 10 seconds one minute 10 minutes one hour one day one week etc to make an item so to launch we'll do a 10 second 10 minute one hour and one week speed challenge because i actually be sewing something for my sister-in-law so the rules are that you are allowed to pre-prep you're allowed to draft and any technical difficulties which isn't the norm can be ignored now i will be filming so i will need to pause here and there because i want you guys to have good angles because girl only has one camera okay so i'll be pausing the time on that part generally speaking i want to try and make something that is wearable so we'll see if we can we'll see if that works out now you might want a more detailed explanation about how to actually sew these pieces so i might be putting up full videos of the one hour plus projects so turn on your notification bell after subscribing so you know so you get a ring a ding when these videos are uploaded so let's get into it 10 seconds so for this first challenge you're going to need some pins two scars ideally matching choose a material that's going to really hold up and look good and if you want it to be a bit cinched in grab a belt i gave myself 13 seconds so that i can give myself a three second buffer and start on the 10. it did take me a couple of goes but the idea was to take these two scars line them up and then just pin them at two points on the same side. But for some reason, that last pin was not getting in on that 10 seconds. So it did take me a couple of goes, but I finally got it. It definitely gives a casual, almost boohoo kind of feel. Kind of, I have monies and I don't have to try vibes. Especially with this material. I actually quite like this style, but I would say to wear a strap dress underneath just so you're not exposed. And of course, it's 10 seconds. You're not going to have too much time to sew anything. So if you want to sit it in, grab a belt and style it with some nice shoes, a nice bag. 10 minutes. Thankfully, we now have a bit more time. This piece is going to be a bit more light and summery. So I decided to go for this thin material with lots of nice colours. I put on 10 minutes on the timer with a 3 second buffer. And then we were at it. Step one was to make sure I have the right length of material, which was three meters. And then I halved it. Now that would allow me to make the top and a skirt. And the skirt can then be long or short, depending. Now, once I decided which one I wanted to be my top and which one I wanted to be my bottom, I cut out a six inch wide strip so that I could then cut out a rectangle, which was about six inches by. 18 inches just enough to actually make a neck hole because i don't have a lot of time i need to think of simple ways to line my clothing so i'm going to now focus on the top because the skirt is fundamentally made so with the top i need to find the center so i took the material and folded it in half twice and that allowed me to find the center once i found the center i opened the material up once but then i use that center mark to mark about 12 inches along the top which would be where i'd cut to pop my head through i'm going to take that rectangle that i created and line it up to the line i drew and then just draw on the line on that material by lifting it up a bit and seeing what was going on once it's matched up i just pin it with a needle to make sure we're all good and steady then i took it to the sewing machine i'm going to sew a rectangle a thin rectangle around that line i created for my neck now if i had a bit more time i'd put a bit more thought to the neck shape but also i didn't know how this would turn out so i wanted to do it in this shape because then it'll be easy to cut and reuse you know recycle the material so i'm, I'm thinking about the environment so i actually ran into a bit of problem at this point the problem that occurred here is actually one i think would be very useful to make a video on i won't tell you what the problem was but it is a problem that some of you may run into so once that was done, I grabbed my scissors and then just cut a thin line going down the middle. At the bottom edges, I decided to sew in a diagonal to bring in the arms a bit. And that was actually a good decision, even though I went over time, um, which you'll see. 
it was a good decision because it then allowed me to fold in the armhole so you can't see the rough edges and it just brought the top in a bit more and created some nice ruffles that added i chose this material as well because the edge ends if they're not actually hemmed they still look okay in some of my shots you can see a bold white line that's because i should have just tied it another way and hidden that but yeah moving on <laughs> i actually like how simple this piece is i think it's really cute you can play with the colors put on some you know some bold color shoes you know what i'm saying enjoy yourself so the improvements you can obviously see that the neck is struggling it definitely does need to be sewn down out of place and also i did need those couple more seconds to be able to snip the edges so that that neck folded in a bit more my favorite part of this outfit is the ruffles and i do like how you can wear this skirt short or long and of course would it be wedding preparation if there wasn't an issue with your bag or your shoes or something <laughs> one hour step one was to make a draft so i made sure i had the right shapes and ideas in mind it's going to be a circle skirt dress with circle sleeves yes 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 <laughs> there was going to be a zip but i decided to ditch that and i'll tell you why later i took my material and folded it in half then halved it again, so folded it twice. I pulled it down a bit to mark the halfway point before doing the second fold to make sure I had a square. Once that was done, it was time to mark out the radius plus the length. Cut that out and then mark the radius for the waist. That was my skirt piece. I took my material and folded it four times this time. So the first two times were similar to the skirt, then I folded it twice more. Once I had that thick layer of material forming the square, and marked out my arm's eye using the radius, then the radius plus the length to show the length of the sleeve. I cut it out, giving myself a bit of seam allowance, before realising I accidentally cut out four layers instead of just two, but I decided I would use that to actually hem the bottom of the sleeve. I then took my material on the fold and cut out the left and the right of my back. Before finishing cutting the neck, I folded down the excess, then cut the neck. That will allow me to have four pieces, two main pieces and then two smaller pieces. Putting them right sides together, I can then line the neck instead of having to hem it. It's a fancier way of doing what I did in the 10 minute piece. Now I need to cut out the front. So I took my material on fold again, put down the excess to line the neck, but then put my block on the fold, making sure my left and my right pieces were together. Instead of cutting a standard curved neck, you can see I did this shape and symmetrically comes out something a bit different. I know someone's made a comment about doing different shapes for a neck, so I do want to incorporate that a bit more into my pieces. What I'm going to do is line that up right sides together, then sew a one centimeter seam before snipping the edges and turning it inside out to create a nice finish. Taking two layers of the arm pieces together, I sewed around the edge, then turn it inside out, doing this for the left and the right. Then it was time to sew the necks of my front and my back, giving myself one centimeter or less, before then going in and snipping that, so that when I turned it right sides out, it had a cleaner finish. Understitching at this point would be a good idea, but because of time, I left it. Once I did that for the front and back, I lined up the shoulders, giving myself a one centimeter seam. I was going to leave this as a complete circle, but I decided to snip it so that it was easier to attach to the arm side. So the sleeve attachment is actually the standard way, it's just that the sleeve is a different shape. Match up your sleeve with your mane, right sides together, and then sew one centimeter starting from the edge. Once the sleeve is attached at the arm side, Put your material right sides together and then slow down the side seam. Once I was attached, I actually went back and took in the waist a bit more, creating a diagonal because I decided to ditch the darts for this particular project. And I also decided at this point to ditch the zip because I wasn't sure I'd have time to do that and everything else I wanted to do. Once I cut down the waist to make it a bit more curved, I found the middle of the front of my block and attached it to the middle of my skirt right sides together. Then starting in the middle, I attached the two pieces at the waist, then went back and started in the middle again and attached the other side. Take your material and put it right sides together, starting from the neck, I then sewed a line all the way down. At this point I realised that the skirt was uh, way too short for my personal preference and this is meant to be something that's wearable, so I decided to use the extra time to actually extend the skirt. 
I cut out two large strips and then attach them before attaching them to the bottom of my skirt's right sides together. To continue the flowiness of the circleness of the skirt, <laughs> I put in some pleats as I was attaching the strip and I did that at the sewing machine and I ran out of the strips so I had to go and cut out some more and attach it. Again, if you want more detail, another video can come out. But that was it. I had run out of time. Because of having to stop a number of times or explain things without pausing the timer, I did give myself five more minutes, okay? Allow me. <laughs> so what I did was just go and tweak some parts. Um, I didn't really do anything new. Just taking some parts here and there, go over some seams that maybe were rushed. I didn't hem the bottom of the skirt, though, because I was hoping that the natural end of the anchor wrap material I had would be enough though normally you wouldn't really want that part to show but I thought let me try and stay as true as I can to the time limit so this is what I could come up with I actually quite like this uh I'm stalling because when I was making it I was like I don't know if I like this <laughs> but when I actually saw it on I there's it has a it has a cuteness a innocence you know innocence to it um i would say that last minute ruffled bottom i added saved the dress because it created that layer of yellow on the bottom which just ties it all together a little bit more a material like ankara has lots of patterns you can see these beautiful yellow peach orange triangles you want to try and work with that and create symmetries or other movements with it but I know that if I had to take time to place my pattern, put it in a certain place, it's going to take up time. So I actually like the symmetry of the back and I wish that I was at the front. So it would be nice to have taken more time to actually utilise the material a bit more. Because it is such an interesting colour as well. You kind of do want to play with the pattern side of it because it's not maybe the best colour combination for everybody. I don't know how I feel about the sleeves. I like how the sleeves look on its side view but when it's forward there's just something about the top of it i don't like so i feel like there's two ways around that one i probably should have used a lighter material for this style i think this style looks so beautiful in a flowy almost chiffon type material and i probably should have ditched the two layers i think it turned out well for saving time and creating a really nice edge but i think it does create a bit of a stiffness and doesn't allow it to flow as well as you want it to flow so uh, i don't know if i can call this one a success if it wasn't hemmed and on that note more time would allow you to custom make your belt and even custom make some accessories one week so my sister-in-law recently went to a wedding and she asked me to show the Asher Ebi. I know I've said that wrong. <laughs> it's the name given to a material when it's given to a community to wear for an event. Classically, in traditional Yoruba weddings, you have the Asher Ebi. Ebi. I said it wrong, so I apologise. But it's a really nice way to build community and sometimes what you choose or the colour can have meaning in certain cultures. So for this one, guys, it's going to be like an, an observation, a witnessing of, a, of a, a piece coming together. I'm not going to be going into a lot of detail. I'm emphasising that for this one because you're going to see a lot of detail, but I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. So step one was to make a basic bodice with the front the back and the arms using the steps i showed you in the how to measure yourself and make your own bodice block then i actually sat down and thought about how to compose this piece because i have a lot more time one of the things i really wanted to do is focus on finishing the edges in a neater way so i decided to utilize the lining to do this so i had to think about the adjustments that will need to be made to my seam allowance to allow for this by the way there are some tweaks i've made to the way i use or make a pattern so i am hoping to upload that soon there's a lot coming soon guys this is what happens when you go away for a long time lots of ideas pop into your mind and yeah that's an, that's another story for another day once i had the basic block without the seam allowance and i mapped out how i wanted to do things i started making the patterns 
for the specific style I was sewing. The arms have no lining so I did not put that additional one centimeter on that pattern but the bodice does so I took a large roll of paper and folded it in half and did this twice so that I can map out the front block and the back block including the skirt part of the dress because I just really wanted this to turn out well because this is not cheap material that you play with okay you need to know what you're doing decently okay and it's for my sister-in-law yeah you know get it the red line shows the additional allowance i'm giving so that when i attach the lining i can turn it inside out and i still got you know room to play with as you can see this dress has a drop down shoulder so i did need to make that adjustment on the back and on the arm on one of the arms and so i put in this red line once that was all done and ready and i had all my pattern pieces it was cutting time so i cut a standard arm piece and then another one with that line going straight through for the drop shoulder i then cut out the pieces i needed two pieces for the front the lining and the lace and then two pieces for the back one having that drop shoulder effect on it of course you need to also remember to transfer over the dart once that's done it's matchy matchy time if your lining has a right side you want to put right sides together and then sew one centimeter seam allowance or less all the way around leaving a gap i left the bottom of mine open then i went and snips and snips the edges so it was easier when i turned it inside out pop your hand through bring all the material out and there you go voila now part of the extra time could be used to understitch i did not do that everywhere i did do it on the neckline just to make that lay a bit nicer because that would be visible and of course there are just some things that are simple when it comes to sewing now for this one there is just one shoulder but it's still the same system of giving yourself the standard seam allowance then we're gonna attach the beautiful arm piece yeah 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 guys i started in the middle believe it or not i even pinned it down <laughs> Um, and then also attach the other arm piece. The only difference is you won't have the upper arc as part of the arm side. I'm only attaching it right at the corner. Now we want a bit of flare on that circle hand flare thing. So I measured the sleeve end just to see how I'm going to cut my semicircles for the hand piece. Once that was attached, I then sewed the arm sleeve and the sides of the dress before bringing over the invisible zipper now i don't know what happened here i've explored a bit with attaching zips and i i don't know why i chose this method but anyway it turned out well i'll explain it in detail in the other video what i'm talking about anyway the zip is attached thank god um, and then i cut out a rectangle lined it put it on it looked good added the frills on the shoulder and there we have it the first speed challenge is done this video was a work to film a work to edit but it was so much fun because giving myself that time constraint brought me back to just enjoying the fun and messiness of sewing i'm still learning so much i'm not the best sewer but it just lets me give myself a break and be okay with the mistakes and just embrace the journey so for more please check out createdim.com and at createdim on instagram and I hope in these last couple of months, you have not forgotten that no matter what's happening around the world and no matter what's going on inside, it will never change the reality that you are wonderfully created.